name's Todd Francis. My affiliation, uh, I guess I'm known for uh, doing art with anti-hero skateboards. Ziggy Stardust, the David Bowie album. What? That's not punk. But think about it. Dude was dressing in drag, um, different colored eyes, did things his own way, basically brought like cross-dressing to music at a time where that wasn't done. So that's, uh, as far as I'm concerned, that's pretty punk rock. And that inspired a whole legion of people to do that and take chances with that stuff that, that had never been done. But the reason I, cho I would choose it as like the perfect album is because it's got a beginning and a middle and an end. And the first song just grabs you by the throat. It's a very heavy, like negative song. Uh, the whole body of the album is just f filled with a combination of like hits and incredible songs. And then the last song is this amazing ender, like it feels like an ender. And so the whole thing feels like a movie. You know, you feel like you're part, uh, you're part of a ride that was crafted from beginning to end. And I feel like most punk albums, maybe um, there might be an X album or two that have a feeling like that, you know? But uh, for the most part, I feel like the flow isn't as um, labored over as, uh, as just getting those best songs in there. Um, but that Ziggy Stardust album is just, is just such a piece of art for me and so different and so unusual because it, because it has that beginning, middle, and end where it's truly an album. I mean, selfishly speaking, I think my favorite skate team of any era is the first anti-hero team. Because they were sort of the people that I got in the closest with for the first time, and it was new, and I was new, and it was this really unusual, creative bunch of skaters and minds, and so guys like Sean Young and Andy Roy and Bob Burnquist, um, who were sort of, you know, barely known or hadn't weren't really on the charts yet, and they, and then you got you know Julian Stranger and John Cardiel. Um, for me, that's kind of my favorite because that's like this really important start for me. Um. That is, a, that is a tough question. The band I wish I saw, part of me wants to say like, you know, the Jimi Hendrix experience at Winterland in 1970. Um, but you know, I never, shit, being from LA, I would probably say, you know, seeing Van Halen and like, around the time of like the Us Festival or something would have been pretty amazing and I was like, I wasn't allowed to go, you know, I was too young to go see that stuff, so it was like something I, I was prevented from seeing, so that would have been amazing, um, and maybe seeing, like, any early Devo shows, uh, Devo before the real craze hit, so Devo around, like, 1977 or 78, probably seeing Devo in Akron, Ohio in 1978, 1977, that would have been pretty amazing. Skate picture of all time. Uh, again, it's I'm making it personal, but Nottis at Venice High School. Yeah, Nottis at Venice High School off the banks. That's just a big one for me because knowing him and seeing the spot and just he's just someone who's always impressed and amazed me so much. That photo is always really impactful to me. I mean, I love Fear. I still listen to Fear all the time. Uh, so Fear is incredible. And I was, at the time, I was a huge Agent Orange fan. So Agent Orange was always huge for me too. Um, but I don't still listen to them a ton the way that I listen to Fear. Um, for me, it's bands that I can still listen to and be excited about. So like that Sex Pistols album still is extremely powerful. 
And then, like, I mean, for me, Stooges is punk, and I listen to Stooges a lot. So, how about Stooges and Fear? You think I'd have like an answer for all these just off the top of my head, but, but I don't. I don't think about these questions. <laughs> I mean, I think my favorite skater of all time is Nottis. Because I knew him at the time when he was coming up and just seeing him skate in person was sort of like was sort of like seeing something that didn't seem possible. You know, it, it was like seeing a wall ride for the first time and like, what the hell is that? And like, just, just seeing the stuff that he was doing at the time didn't make any sense to the rest of us. Um, and so, and he's just, I mean, he's a, he's a good friend of mine. And I, I love the guy. My favorite skateboard ever was my first legitimate skateboard ever, which was, um, a Ray Bones Rodriguez, you know, s sword and skull. It was silver. It had every piece of plastic known to man attached to it, you know, which meant the graphic lasted forever. And I loved the graphic and I loved all of Cortland Johnson's art, even though I didn't know who he was at the time because they didn't really, his name wasn't really out there. But that was my first legitimate skateboard and, you know, I babied it and let the allowed the graphics to last as long as possible, you know? So, I guess, yeah, those are my favorite skateboard of all time. My first real one. The most impactful one, which is not even, which was the top graphic for, um, for all those power boards, the, the Dragon top graphic. And I just remember staring at it, and it just seemed like something completely unattainable. Like the, the, the talent it took to create something like that, and the depth to it, and the detail, and everything just seemed so perfect and so mathematical and so amazing. And, and again, completely unattainable, like something I could never do. And so it was always just this huge inspiration. I had a couple of the stickers, and I never even crossed my mind to stick them on anything because I wanted them to last forever, so I just kept them in my desk drawer for you know, it's five years or something. They're probably still in a drawer somewhere. I never wanted to use them because I cherished them so much because I could just, I could just vanish into the graphics because they were just so proficiently done. That's actually the first question you've asked me that I actually know the answer to. The the my my favorite board I've ever designed um, is one for Antihero uh, for Julian Strangers called the K9. And it shows a, 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 a policeman's German Shepherd turning on him and biting his face off. And I think it's from like 1997, I think, something like that. And um, I love it because the green, the full pass green that's on it is like my favorite green color. It's this kind of shitty green. And the, the message is really clear. It's super negative and like animals against man and like, you know, fighting against, you know, the message is pretty clear what it is. But, um, I'd say it's like one of the best graphics I've done because there's no background, there's no, it's not complicated, it's not busy, it's just very pure and simple and, and, and the message is, is pretty hard to miss. Um, best show I ever saw, and I've seen, the, I've seen the Stones play a bunch and that always gets me really fired up, but there was this band in the 90s in San Francisco called Dieselhead that played pretty much the entire duration of the 90s. And their early shows, I used to go see it in San Francisco at like Bottom of the Hill and, and a couple other places. And there was this span of a couple of years where they played every week and their shows would get feisty as hell and really fun. They were, they were a, such a great band and so much fun. Um, so I'm gonna say 
Diesel had the bottom of the hill in 1994, probably. Uh, a band that not many people are going to know about, but man, I love them. They were so good and so entertaining, and they would just play forever, too. Do things differently. Don't copy what older people are doing. Just be creative and don't care what came before you. And uh, have fun with whatever you're doing. And don't take it too seriously. Just have a good time. Because everyone's going to tell you how to do things and they're always wrong. And things will be boring and the same and stagnant if you just do what everyone else around you is doing. Just have fun with life. It's not going to last very long. You're going to get cancer and die. Just have some fun. Make your mark. Have a good time with whatever you're doing. Good luck staying alive. I'm from California. For me, the coolest motherfucker of the week is Jerry Brown, the governor, who has always been a freak, and probably the other 49 states in the country think he's a complete weirdo. But California's in the middle of this horrible drought that um, the cities uh, and much of the state is in denial over. And what Jerry Brown has come out and done is he's saying, look, we can't deny anymore, and we're going to start cutting water usage across the board. And so all you assholes that need to keep your lawns green in Newport Beach and all you rich people in Beverly Hills because the whole city is water and everything green and there's no point to having green grass you guys are all gonna come under fire and it's gonna start costing you money and so he's dropping the hammer on everybody and making it cost more to waste money on stupid things like lawns so I think that's incredibly brave it's gonna be very unpopular for a lot of people in the state and to me that's the you know the sign of a bad motherfucker so Jerry Brown you're my baddest motherfucker